When I was a kid, my grandpa used to take me fishing pretty regular and we always went crappie fishing and we always used minnows. Welcome to Heartland Makes and Outdoors. In today's video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making some minnows out of some walnut here in the shop. So let's get to the video. When I was a kid, my dad and I used to do a lot of fishing. We used to go to Canton Lake and we always mostly did crappie fishing, especially when I was younger. When I got a little bit older, he would let me plug along and try to do some bass fishing before we got to our crappie hole. But typically when I was going fishing with dad, we were going crappie fishing and we were fishing with minnows. And if you guys have been following the channel very long, you know that a while back I was saying that I was having trouble finding Roadrunner jigs, they don't carry them at the Walmart here in East Texas out here where I live and I asked a few people and they said no, no, we're we're getting Roadrunners and we don't have any problems. Another thing's happened over the last two years when we first moved here out in East Texas. We used to have a place where you could buy minnows and that place has since closed down. They just couldn't make it over the last year and so anyhow I got to thinking, hey, I'm having a tough time finding minnows, and I remember as a kid, I always enjoyed making my own lures. Of course, you know, we'd have a jig head and paint them and do whatever. So it wasn't really truly crafting a lure. So I thought, how fun would it be to make my own lures? So let's go out into the shop. We're going to walk through this process. And this lure, basically, and I'm going to, while you're kind of watching in the background, I'm going to be kind of telling you a little bit about the lure and, and some things that I, that I wanted in the lure. Number one, uh, I don't have to worry about trying to keep live bait alive. And the, oh, the closest bait store that we have is roughly about 30 minutes away, 45 minutes away, and it's at Cattle Lake. And if I'm wanting to go fish Martin Lake or um, Martin Creek or Perky Lake, that would mean that I'd have to go to the store the night before, buy minnows, and keeping them alive ain't going to happen. Plus, there's also that element of I really enjoy fishing with lures anyways, and how fun would it be to try to create a, something that would simulate a minnow, and we don't have to worry about the thing dying overnight before we can get ready to go fish the next day out of the kayak. So what I've come up with, just kind of doing it, and, and I'll start this off, guys. I'm not some pro lure maker. I'm a guy that enjoys making stuff. That's part of the reason that this channel is called Heartland Makes and Outdoors. And I enjoy making outdoor gear. If you guys follow along, you know I do a lot of leather stuff and make archery gear and stuff like that. Well, we're going to start making our own fishing lures this year. And I'd like to bring you guys along with us. But one of the things that I really wanted, so I did a real quick research, is I wanted to make sure that this minnow is going to sink down. Because this time of year, we're in the heat of the summer. You guys can probably see the sweat rolling off of me right now but the heat of the summer right now the most of the crappie are in between 15 and 20 foot depth so I wanted to make sure that whatever lure I had was going to get down to the right depth and making it out of wood I was afraid that it might float too much so basically I, I, met, I built five of these and I kind of put weights in different parts of it so that I could try to get a fairly level float and I also wanted it to have two hook sets. So it's gonna have a treble hook on the front and a treble hook in the back. They're gonna re be real small treble hooks and they should also help level out the lure once we get it down to the right depth. But that was kind of my goal and what I was trying to accomplish with this. At the end of this video, after we're done making the video, I'm gonna show some close-ups of this lure and show you how it reacts or works in the water it actually sinks like a rock so i think it will be able to get to the depth okay i think we'll be able to get to the depth okay unfortunately the wind has been blowing like crazy the last two days and i'm not going to be able to get out on lake of the pines and go fishing but what i am going to do we're going to take this lure down to the creek which is not too far from here and we're going to do the 10 cast like we do with i've been doing this on my other channel where i take my little portable fishing pole with me and i'll run up to a lake somewhere kind of show the guys around the lake and then i'll do 10 casts see if we catch anything we're going to do the 10 cast see if i can catch anything with this minnow that we made and like I say i made a few of them and what i've found to be true if you guys are new to lure making instead of just making one at a time try to make three four or five and the reason being is when you start painting 
you're going to get better each time you paint something just and and it doesn't matter if you're talking about cutting the lure out painting it the whole sh thing so if you build a group of like four or five of them all at the same time trust me you'll be able to tell the difference between number one minnow and your number five minnow because by the time you get to that fourth or fifth one you're actually getting a little bit of the arc to it down and you know what you need to do to make it look better so i'll show you guys and you guys can kind of pick it might be kind of a fun game you can figure out what order i made these in but again we're at, a, at the end of this video i'm going to take you with me we're gonna run out there, we're gonna do the 10 cast, see if we can catch anything on this and see if the lure works. Will it catch fish or won't it? So again, this video is gonna keep on rolling. I'll, I'll throw out a couple of key points in this video. A couple of things that you may see that, a couple of things that you might see is I do have a big eraser. It's a, it's a deal to clean your sander. And I'll show you how I'm using that. Guys, the reason that thing is so important, number one, it's really cheap. And you'll get two, three, four times the life out of your sanding belts, even your sandpaper. I even use it on my orbital sander. And then another thing that you're gonna see in the background me doing is you're gonna see me sharpening up my razor blade with my strop. It always, even if with a brand new blade, I'll strop it 10, 15 times on both sides and you get a lot sharper, crisper cut. When you're cutting out these tiny patterns like this, especially on notebook paper or something or card stock, having a good sharp blade is going to help you and make your life a lot better, especially if, when you go to start cutting in the details. Like if this one here has got basically a thin blue ridge line on it, and then also if you start cutting out gill plates or any of that, it just makes it a lot better if you got a good sharp blade. And that's just one of the things that also extend your blade life by being able to strop it as well. We are packing really light. Let me go back here. See if we can catch something. This lure is going to be small enough. I'll try to get you some action, but we're going to have to do that at home, probably in a small bowl or whatever, because it's a small lure. This water normally holds some fish. Like I say, I wasn't able to <laughs> All right, tin cast. Let's see what happens. Well, it's, it's tracking good. I don't know if you guys will be able to see that at all, but it tracked really good. Oh, we just had a bump. We just had a bump. Let's see if we can get it to take it. Should have set the hook. That's cast number three. And we've had a bump. Oh yeah, that looks beautiful coming through the water. That's awesome. Oh man, he hit it right when it hit the water. I did not get a good hook set. I mean, it hammered it right when it hit the water. Dang, may need to put bigger hooks on this. Yeah, I don't know what cast we're on. We're not gonna count that one. I hung up on the other side. Got excited. Got two good hits. I mean, he, he hit good and spit it out. Get her.
All right, we're gonna wrap this video up. That's the lure right there in its entirety. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for taking time to watch the video and commenting and man, we're gonna catch some fish with this rascal. Again, guys, we appreciate your likes, comments, and subscribes. I hope you all have a blessed week and can find time and make time to get outside. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video. And again, it's so much fun to go out and use some gear that you made yourself. If you like watching Buster playing with his tennis ball in the background, be sure to thank him. Down below, you can actually hit the thanks button and you can buy Buster a tennis ball if you want. He truly loves his tennis balls. <laughs> If you like our video, give us a big thumbs up. We appreciate your likes, comments, and subscribes. May you have a blessed weekend. And let's go make some stuff happen in the outdoors.